What's up you guys? It is Mary Beth Eversole, the allergy actress, and I am here today with my very special guest, Scotty Jeanette Madden, who is an author, a director, a producer, and a consummate foodie just like myself. And so we are here today to talk about a myriad of things. Amongst other things, we're talking about food, we're talking about how it, relates, uh, how it relates to our emotions, we're talking about specifically your transition from man to female and um, man to woman, however we say that, and um, you've written a book about that. That's right. Yes, and so please uh, tell me a little bit, this is the book, and isn't that a gorgeous cover? Like, love it. So, um, so this is the story. Right? Yes, this is the story of the the first year of my official transition. Yeah. So you know what makes it a little bit, you know, unique is that I came out to my wife of 27 years, about seven years ago. Yeah. And so we kind of sat on it for five. We didn't sit on it, but we both needed to kind of figure out how to work it into a marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was about another five years before we I, I came out to the world. So this yeah. is the you know starting with that setup and then the first year of transition. And I got to tell you guys, I, I've started reading this book. I haven't completely finished it, but I am so excited to finish it. She is a wonderful author. I mean, just descriptive and um, I'm right in it with her. Like I, the emotion, sometimes I have to put the book down honestly, because I'm like, Me whoa. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but it's something that I think needs to be out there. Nobody shares about their transition. You know, they, they talk about how you know, um, that trans women and men are struggling and the struggle they go through, but no one really ever kind of goes into right. why it was a struggle. How's, what is the struggle? What did you feel with that? And you go into it in this book, <laughs> like in detail. And it's, uh, it's just a beautiful read. So descriptive. I love it. So thank you. Yes. And we'll mention it again at the end. It's called getting back to me. And uh, it is her full author name, Scotty Jeanette Madden. And I will say, you have a Christine in your name as well, Scotty <laughs> Jeanette Christine Madden. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Marcy. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, uh, let's get to cooking. I know that okay. food played a huge part in your role in transitioning. So I want to talk okay. about that a lot today. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. Um, so we're making something so good. What are we making? We're gonna make what we uh, I'm calling savory pumpkin pies, and I call it that because I. I when I first made this recipe, I called them jack-o'-lantern pies because they made them for Halloween. Yes. But um, what, by making them pumpkin pies, we're riffing on squash, mm -hmm. right? You can use any squash in terms of, we don't have any pumpkins right now. It's no. almost yeah. the end of winter here. I know. But you can use anything you want. Yeah, so today we're using acorn squash. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, you guys, we're getting to the ingredients. Today we're using acorn squash. It's not a real acorn, guys, nor is it a pumpkin, right? That's correct, So, but you can use a pumpkin. So what we're gonna yeah. do is it's gonna be both the crust and the filling, right? So it's an ingredient for the filling. So what we do is we'll cut it, we'll show you in a little while, we'll cut the, the middle cut part the to crust. get this crust, yep. and the two ends we're gonna roast and puree. Aha! Uh -huh. So that way you get all, and we're gonna use the seeds. For yes. because the, the seeds inside of these guys are, are so good and delicious oh my gosh okay. so okay so what's next uh we're gonna add uh with that filling we're gonna make add eggs so you take three eggs okay and the thing about the filling is you it's, it's as much as you need for the people you're serving okay right so we're gonna make enough today for five Mm -hmm. um, and technically it would be enough for six yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and so that would be with three eggs and the rest of the ingredients. Okay, now I have a question about the eggs. For those of us who are egg allergy, which I'm, I can have them, but I know a lot of my audience can't, you can substitute flax meal with water and it becomes the egg when you use it in baking. Do you think that might work? That'd be perfect. What we're gonna okay. do is we're gonna make it, it's almost like a, a, a souffle. Yes. So whatever you can, we're gonna do to make the pumpkin puree act as a souffle type Okay, yes. Filling. So yeah, the flax gel, you guys, with the water, that would be great if you can't have eggs. Okay. Okay. All right. So the next ingredient would be the milk, correct? That's correct. Now, Coconut milk. Here's why I was excited to be on your show. I've been cooking for my mate, yes. Marcy, for 28 years. We'll be married 28 years this oh, April. Congratulations. Thank you. That's exciting. And I've been doing all the cooking all our life. Yes. Um, and recently, because of health reasons, we needed to shift her diet. Mm -hmm. It wasn't important to me to... I didn't care one way or the other. I wanted to get the same kind of textures, but I wanted to make something for her. Yes. Right. So I, it, was, it was an easy change to make. 
Coconut milk we use all the time for any of the places we had dairy. Yes. Um, it's not as flavorful as you would think. It's not, I mean, in other words, you can climb over the top of it and any of the flavors that you need yeah. when you don't want it to be coconut, mm -hmm. and you can enhance it when you do want it to be coconut. Exactly. In this yes. case, we just want it to act like milk. Absolutely, and I love I love coconut milk, you guys, because um, as you know that I've, I've been interested in paleo a little bit, and paleo uses coconut, all sorts of coconut, and the coconut milk is great because it can be substituted for heavy cream, and you know, it, and you can whip it up and make whipped cream if you want to, yep. and you can just use it in baking, you can use it in cooking like we're doing today. So That's right. The coconut is a really special thing. Like I used to do a lot of survival television, mm -hmm. and whenever I could throw one of my guys out onto a de desert island, as long as there were coconuts there, they were happy. They were fine. That's yeah. Fine. That's crazy. Yeah. That show. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> okay. okay. What's up next? Now the last thing in the in the um, base of the filling mm -hmm. is shallots. So we yes. are going to saute shallots. You guys. So good. Oh my gosh. Smell. Okay. Ah, so this gives us, this is what takes it away from the sweet of pumpkin. Yes. Right? And makes it Into savory. savory. Pumpkin, yep. Right. So it's, it gives a little bit more body. It plays well with all the pumpkin. Yep. It's going to be a delicious texture and flavor inside the pie. Yeah. And this is one shallot, correct? A large shallot. It's a really large shallot. It's the largest shallot I've ever like seen. Giant. <laughs> um, and we sliced it, as you can see, and then sauteed it in olive oil, correct? Okay. And just a touch of sherry vinegar to kind of make and it sherry blend vinegar. in with what we're going to okay. We're going to play with sherry today. Ooh. All right, there you go. <laughs> now, what's up next? Let's we'll see. Okay, so the, the the seasonings for that are the last ingredients that we're going to use. So, okay. as we said, uh, we've got uh, salt. Salt, and I use the pink Himalayan, you guys. Right. It's the kind that I like. It has all the minerals. It's so great. There you go. And chipotle. And chipotle. And how much salt? Uh, it's the, to your own flavoring and okay. taste, right? So I use I go a little bit heavy on it. Yeah. In this and for this amount, we'll go with a half teaspoon. Okay, great. Right. And then the chipotle. This is powdered chipotle, you guys, and chipotle pepper, and it's it's like. Oh, it smells so cool. I'm like, yes. Chipotle is the, one of the basis of my cooking, and I don't use it as a flavoring so much mm -hmm. as an igniter. So it ignites oh, all word. the flavors. Thank you. Yes. It, you, it ignites all the flavors because I, I, I'm a fire breather. I'll, yeah. I want it as hot as it can be. Marcy's not so much. She's like, I right. like to taste my food. <laughs> so I've learned to back off over years, right. and that's why I use Chipotle. It just, it's smoky. It it's more it smoky than yeah. it is like... Yes. And it will you know. be something that helps us take the two natural and cliched ingredients for pumpkin pie, which yes. is allspice. Allspice. I love allspice. Right. And cinnamon. And, I mean, who doesn't love cinnamon? That's right. And cinnamon in a savory flavor is, yes. just, is just a great, you know, a way to really excite someone's taste buds. Absolutely. So I have a question. How many of, how, uh, the measurements, how many of each? Well, chipotle would be to taste. And remember, we don't want, I mean, you can push it and go yeah. all the way into the chipotle flavors, but we're going to go to mellow it out. So I would say we're going to use about less than a quarter teaspoon. Okay. All right. Got With it. the cinnamon and the allspice, half teaspoon each. Half teaspoon each. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's the end of the filling. That's right. And then we have the garnish, correct? Right. So the and... last thing is the garnish. So with the garnish, we have olive right. oil. We have olive yes. oil. How much olive oil? Uh, we're going to use just a drop of it. Now, we've oh. been using olive oil through this whole thing because right. we're going to base the, the the rounds Yes. so that we can grill them. Yes. Don't forget to do that, you guys. Do right. not stick the squash on the grill without some olive oil. That's right. <laughs> or but we're something. Also using, and it's a chance for us to inject a little bit more flavor. So yes. we're going we're gonna to mix a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of the sherry, and some garlic. Mm -hmm. And we're going to brush that on the, the rounds. Yes, absolutely. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take what we already mixed together, because we're not going to use it all in that, mm -hmm. and we're going to dump it into the filling. Yeah, oh, okay? good, good flavor And we'll have profile. a little bit left, so that what we're going to do is we're going to toast Bright bread crumbs. crumbs, yes. Right, and the pumpkin seed or the acorn squash seeds. Ooh, acorn squash seeds, yes. Put and a you little can bit use more either. of the olive oil into the toasted, mm -hmm. so that it kind of gives it a nice little crispiness to it. Yes. A little bit more salt, a little bit more of the cinnamon, and a little bit of the chipotle to ignite everything. And we're gonna use that to top. Look at Garnish you and your flavor profiles. Mm -hmm. My goodness. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so we mentioned. Uh, the garlic right garlic. that goes with the olive oil and we're going to crush the garlic is that correct that's correct okay what how do you crush your garlic uh i um have a garlic press i do too i just didn't bring it <laughs> well i'll show you another trick okay uh the flat of a knife oh so smart no, and you get to use your you know get your questions out with your fist yes we get to set them up for yes. something that's going to come over later 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, and then there's sherry vinegar. Sherry vinegar, which you guys, this is this is such a cool um, ingredient. It's only allowed in one very specific region in Spain, and it's only made by a specific grape. And if you want to make sherry vinegar, if you're in a different part of the world, you have to go to that region, get a starter like you would for like sourdough, and then go back and start making your sherry vinegar from that starter. Or otherwise, it's not considered sherry vinegar, which is so cool. I think that's so cool. Uh, well, and how, am I supposed to like pretend like I knew all that? Because I'm like sitting here blown away going, damn, girl, <laughs> go with your food I knowledge. just did a little research on that. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and also it has a really unique flavor palette and yeah. smell. I love it. It's it's yeah. very it's not overbearing, nope. and I love that. So okay, and then we have the breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. Now, um, you guys, the breadcrumbs, the rice breadcrumbs that are made for, that you can buy from the store. They kind of really mm -mm. No, they they are really bad. Like, no. sorry, breadcrumb people, but <laughs> they're like teeny tiny and like it's basically they're like not flour, it was right? Like, it's like rice it was flour. Like rice flour. I felt like I wasted my money. Yeah. So what I did was, you can either make your own gluten free bread, which props to you if you do that every day. Um, I do not. So I found a bread that I can have from the store, and um, I just I put it in my food processor, yep. and it made much better breadcrumbs that That's we right. can actually use that will absorb the olive oil and right. not turn into a clump And we just want mess. a little crunchiness, something to kind of break up the textures that we exactly. have because we're going to be in the squash, quick squash world. Yes. So, yep. You know, texture All right. is important. And I think, oh, seeds. That's right. We've got seeds. The last is the seeds. All right. Here, I'll give that to you. Thank you. Okay, you guys. So you can use the seeds from pretty much whatever squash you're making. So we, we're making acorn squash today. That's right. So we're using acorn seeds. Nice. And they're so good. I never thought to try acorn seeds. And you brought it to me today and I was like, these are amazing. <laughs> so I was really excited. They have a little, they're a little more mellow than like a pumpkin seed, but they're still so good. And if you get the right amount of like char on them, it's just like, mm, mm, mm. yes. And they're a little bit more moist. And yes, so that, they are. That, you know, that way. And so they're not, they don't break up into that splintery wood feeling that you oh, yes. I hate that you're like Ooh, pull Ow. it out yeah <laughs> exactly so you can use either the seed from the squash or if you really like pumpkin seeds you can use those too and just garnish them on top okay I think that's it right that's it awesome on to the main event y'all so the first step we're going to show you how to cut the acorn squash and create the crust right that we will be doing. So, would you like to do the honor, Scotty? Oh, well, I would love to. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create the round. Okay. That we're going. That's going to be an individual one. So these are individuals. Yes. And then the other parts of the squash don't, as we said, don't go unused. That's They're going to be the puree. Be the yes. Filling, right? Okay. So. So. You you doing that so much easier than I could have done it. Squash is like one of the hardest things to cut, you guys, and depending on what squash it is. It's like like butternut squash. Oh my gosh, y'all! It's if Did you can you find yes. <laughs> I'm from the Midwest. Thank you uh -huh. very much. Um, so then you shout out Midwest. Uh -huh. Okay. Ooh, very nice, very nice. So this is the crust, right. and then we're gonna cut out the center. Correct. Correct. Now, do you guys see all these nice, lovely seeds? These are gonna be used and toasted, right. and used again for the garnish. Correct. Or you could just use them and eat them because. Squash far more than seeds are use. yummy. That's right. So it's not just pumpkin seeds, y'all. It's squash seeds. Squash seeds. Squash seeds. How come they don't sell squash seeds? I don't know. Maybe maybe they are selling us squash seeds and we don't know it. We're buying pumpkin seeds. You are seeds. a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Brett, take note. <laughs> Okay, so beautiful. So this, do we keep it like this, basically? Then yes. So okay. That's that. So that's the crust. That's the crust. Right. Okay. And where you want to put this, you guys, we'll show you in a second. But you're gonna put a little individual foil that's kind of like, basically a little bit larger than this circle, and you're gonna put it on the foil and fold the foil up. Okay. So, yes, because it doesn't have a bottom. Right. Yeah. So all the filling would seep out if we don't have the bottom. So yeah. Okay. And then of course we said. These uh, scoop out the seeds again for the ends, although this mm -hmm. end doesn't really have much, and put the seeds together and then use this for the puree. Now, do you um, do you use the rind as well? Or no, do you... The, you can. I've heard some people that like acorn squash skin. To me, it's still a little bit rough. Yeah, it is. So, rough. what I do is I just roast the whole thing. Okay. 
And then, um, you know, you can peel the skin off that point. Easily, it's easier, yes. It's a lot easier than this. Also, I'm very impatient, so I want to get it done as fast as possible. <laughs> yes. Because we need the puree to make the filling. So while we're grilling these, we're roasting this. Aha, uh -huh. okay. That's one of the best things to do. I steam my pumpkins, my pie pumpkins, when I do them, and that, too, takes off the skin. Mm -hmm. And it takes, like, 20 minutes to steam them. Mm -hmm. But but roasting is another great way to get the squash skin off. Because y'all, if you try to... There it is, y'all again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you try to um, to get the skin off while it's not cooked, it's just a headache. Yeah, it, is, it takes too much time. Yeah, too so much time. Of time. So okay, so that's it. So we're mm -hmm. gonna move on to the next step. We will show you how to put on the stuff on the grill. So what do we do first? Okay, so we roasted the pumpkin. Yes. And you puree it. Uh, and it's acorn squash today. That's right. Yes. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> I can't even remember, and I'm the one who invented this recipe. <laughs> it's such a good recipe, you guys. I can't wait. Okay. Okay, so we pureed the squash, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to take three eggs. Okay. Right, and crack them into this puppy. I'm going to borrow this. Okay. Right. Yay. Oh, look at you in your smart way. I always do it on the table, but I'm going to let you do it, because that's cool. And the brown eggs, I will say this about brown eggshells, they're a lot easier to break and crack and they tend to go into shatter pieces. Whereas like if you use the, the bleached white eggs, um, those tend to not crack as easily. So sometimes you're doing like, you wanna do the egg white and get rid of the yolk. The white eggs are easier to use, but I don't like using them because I don't like them being blanched so, no. or bleached. Um, so just be aware and have your hands there so that the shells don't into the place. So we're whisking. We're whisking. Whisk, 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 right. whisk, whisk. Let me get a table. A table. Let me get a plate <laughs> so that you can put the whisk on it. Thank you. Then we're going to add a cup of coconut milk. Yes. Again, this is going to make enough filling for five. Yes. And by the way, let's talk about this coconut milk for a second. This is the Asian style coconut milk. That's yes. Right. Yeah. It's a little bit thicker. Yes. And it's, right. it's the one that comes in a can. And you'll find that it, when you open it, it has the thick stuff at the top and the liquid at the bottom. If you buy the coconut milk that's already mixed and it's in the freezer, or sorry, in the refrigerator section, then it's going to not be as thick. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, if, if you open up those cans, and I use it all the time, and it's not together, throw it in a, in a pot like the, or a bowl like this and just whisk it. Yeah. Exactly. I've got like 40 whisks in my kitchen <laughs> nice. and spatulas. All different sizes. That's right. I just like. How small is your smallest whisk? Uh, it's actually uh, big enough to get into this guy. That's so cute. Just, oh my gosh. How do you even whisk it? It's like. <laughs> it's like milking a mouse. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, eggs and coconut, coconut milk. Coconut milk. Right? Okay. Now we're going to put in the, the puree, squash. Right? Okay. Nice. And the squash, um, you puree it by, do you use a food processor? I use a, uh, just an immersion blender. Oh, immersion blender. Those are yeah. wonderful things, yeah. you guys. Yeah. I've talked about them before. Yeah. You use them for soup. I think we may have used it for a soup in the past. Um, it's just a handheld little blender. You can get it for $16 from the store, I swear to you. And it's the most amazing tool. You can use it to make all sorts of soups, pureed soups, purees. It's amazing. I recommend highly that you purchase one. Do you have a, a spatula? Oh, do I have a spatula? Mm -hmm. I have a spatula. Yeah, I have a spatula. Let me get one here. I learned to use spatulas Boom. because I spend so much time getting a great flavor here. I don't want to leave it in there. Right. Because so, so, so many times it falls to the bottom and you yeah. want to get all of the all goodness of out. Yeah, I work hard for that. I don't want it to go yes. into the dishwasher. No. That's, that's, that's the uh, term lick the plate clean. <laughs> lick it clean. All right. Cool. And by the way, this puree is edible as is because you baked it, or you roasted it, grilled it, whatever we're doing today, grilling. Right. right. So um, if you don't want to put it in this beautiful thing that we're making, you could just eat it like this. Right? Right. Yeah. Just like that. <laughs> okay. So okay. we're whisking that together. Right. And the normal flavors that are always in a pumpkin pie are cinnamon. Yes. Oh, and allspice. Okay. Yes. And allspice. And put it to your taste. This is to your liking. Right. Okay. Um, you can usually smell if you put too much. 
<laughs> and you can also see if you put too much. So um, you want to make sure that when you're whisking it in that it does go back slightly to that orange color. If it stays brown, you've likely put in too many spices. <laughs> Which again, it's not so bad. It's not too bad, it's not, it's you not, know. It's not a sin. Okay, so now here's the amount of chipotle. Here's the so kick. Again, we're not going to make a chipotle flavored dish. Right. Right, so we're going to just add in enough just lightly. to ignite it. Right? Just That's a enough. Bit. That right yeah. there is going to be enough to set it off. People are going to yeah. go, oh, my tongue is tingling, but it doesn't taste But it's like not like, bah! Right. And chipotle has got a smoky flavor anyway. I love the smoky flavor. Yeah, smoked jalapenos. Yes. Um, <laughs> so um, you, know, you got to be careful not to put too much in, unless you want to go there. I mean, yeah. you know, on that day, you want to go there. It's, yeah. Um, it's your body, peeps. That's right. Okay. It's your taste buds, right? <laughs> exactly. Okay, then so then Himalayan the salt, salt. oh, Sorry. the Himalayan salt likes to stick sometimes, so sometimes you just have to it's moist up there. get in there, and especially if it's in a humid place, it just is like, it'll clump together. I actually had to, my Himalayan salt, when I got it out today, the whole container was one solid salt block, <laughs> and I had to like do it with the knife, and I was like, ah, oh. okay. Okay, so now we... You know, well, we used we grilled the, it right, and we did the olive oil and the sherry and the garlic that we brushed the onto the crusts, right. Yep. Mm -hmm. We have some left over. It's yep. not going to go to waste because we want it. That's good flavor. Yes. All right. And then the last uh, thing we do is we took take those sauteed shallots. shallots. Anyway, sauteed shallots. Remember, sauteed in garlic, in olive oil, and a little bit garlic and sherry. If there weren't raw eggs in there, I would just drink that right up. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a rocky smoothie with pumpkin. Yes. <laughs> or squash. Sorry. Squash. Pumpkin is squash. Pumpkin is squash. Isn't it? It yes. is. It is. It is a squash. And it's again, we can use squash. any squash we want. Yes. Acorn okay. is a cute squash too, I think. I it think is. acorn's like the cutest squash. Uh, the pie yeah. pumpkins are cute too. They though. are. They are super They're cute. They're so sweet. They're so sweet. Huh? Okay. On to the next step. We promised you all that we'd show you how to crush some garlic. She has a great method, so please. Show away. Yes, it's uh, it's got it, it, it takes finesse and style, <laughs> or as we which say, which you have both of. We, thank you. Yes. But as we say in the business, blunt force trauma. So you yes, bam, flat bam. Knife it, like that. that works too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret technique been handed down okay. for generations in my family. When things don't work, we usually just hit them with a bigger hammer. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> So and then just, you slice it up a little bit. Right, just to kind of get it. Crushed it and sliced it. it. Yeah. Add it to the olive oil and sherry, sherry vinegar. vinegar. Yeah. yeah. Stir so it up a little bit. Stir up a little bit. All right. And that's the base. And that is, I can I smell it? Mm -hmm. I have to smell this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's, I love it. Right. I'm such a vinegar fan, you guys. Like, ugh. Okay, so then we put this on this. Right. Yes, not on the grill, on the on, on the squash. Correct. Yeah. And because you want to be able to get it inside of all of it. What we're doing is we're starting the cooking process of the squash. Eventually, we want it to be completely baked nice. Yes. Right? Get us that nice squashy texture. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> squashy texture. Squashy yes. texture. Yeah. That's a technical term. Yeah. Right on the grill. And the reason why we're using a grill is that we want some nice caramelized marks. Yes. Right? It's really, at this point, it's about pretty because we're going to bake it in the oven. So this isn't about cooking it. It's just about making it look pretty. Right. So this is, yeah, we're not cooking it through. Right. We're just putting those lines on there, those pretty, pretty lines. When I'm in a real hurry, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put it on like this and I'll take a, a top to a pot mm -hmm. and I'll pour a little wine on there and put the top over it and steam Ooh. and grill it at the same time. That's a good it idea. It pushes the, the yep. process a little bit faster. Yes. These are going to bake with the filling in them for 35 minutes anyway, so we're pretty much going to roast them yeah. again. Yeah. But again, it's just about pretty. Yes. Pretty, pretty. Everything's about pretty. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you're eating food, you want it to look pretty. That's right. Yes. And we want everything to look pretty. Uh, yeah. See? <laughs> Sparkly, golden, happy. That's right. Yes. <laughs> okay. So while this is grilling, we're going to show you about the puree. We're going to uh, roast. We're going to show about the roasting, and then we're going to show about the puree, and then we'll That's be moving it. on from that. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> As we are ladling the filling into the squash, I want to talk to you a little bit about your transition. Okay. And I know that you mentioned to me several times that food kind of had an interwoven 
path in this whole transition and, and that part of your life. So can you talk a little bit more about yeah, that? Yeah, what's weird is that it, I didn't realize it till I wrote it, right? And, okay. Because I, you know, I was chronicling my from my journals that year of transition. Yes. And, and while we, let's yeah. put the foil. So, so we're going to no. do some foil, you guys. Um, split it in two. And then wrap it. Okay, so we're wrapping yeah. it, and, and, and I, so that was your whole that whole year. That's right. And so I, I had so many recipes for food, or I was describing coming out to somebody while really? I was cooking for them, that I realized that how I didn't realize until then how much cooking was how I dealt with my gender dysphoria my entire life because I've been cooking all my life. My whole family cooks, mm -hmm. um, but I was really channeling everything into my cooking and, yeah. and you know getting a lot of what I see now is. You know what we what we would say are our traditional female values like yes. nurturing, caring for people, which not right. that boys don't do that. But I didn't have a chance to do it like I would to the extent that I wanted to. Yeah. So I would do it in cooking because if you start to do that too much, then people get uncomfortable, yep. especially when it's coming from a boy. Yeah. So, anyways, um, I did that, and so, but my book has all kinds of recipes. <laughs> nice. But it's not. I didn't write them in recipe form. I just like explained what I was doing because it was ironic what I was doing. For yeah. example, at Thanksgiving, I was making dressing. Yeah. But it was also the first time that I was courageous enough to dress for my crew. Uh huh. I had been hiding Scotty. I, I made little secret things here and there, like I had yeah. an acrylic, you know, manicure. Yeah. But. I was wearing gloves. I was working in Alaska on an adventure show, and so my crew never really saw them unless I took my gloves off. But Props this was... to you for wearing acrylic nails while working in Alaska. <laughs> I'm telling you, well, mascara <laughs> freezes, by the way. I didn't know this. Uh, whoops. <laughs> so, uh, but we had a Thanksgiving meal as a crew because we couldn't get home for Thanksgiving. Yes. So it wasn't lost on me that I was dressing mm -hmm. while I was going to be dressing. Because dressing, yeah. the word dressing is a phrase in the trans community that means that you're going to be yourself. Oh. That you don't show to everybody. Okay. Like they will say, are you going to dress tonight? That doesn't mean are you going to put on a dress. That means yeah. are you going in girl mode? As yourself. That's yeah. right. And there's stages to everybody's journey. But in my journey, you know, went through this confusing part of like, I have to be me, even if it's only for five minutes. Because, yeah. you know, when you're growing up this way and you have all these signals that say, I am in the wrong body mm -hmm. and you look down and you go, but this is my body. I'm looking out of it. So it has to be mine. It's like, but it isn't, it doesn't feel like mine. What's going on? Yeah. So I had to go through the various stages and it wasn't until I was able to fully be myself and not have to care mm -hmm. that I took it off. That's when I realized I, I can't live any other way. I yeah. Other way. I have to tell you, um, and you, let's go ahead and we'll mm -hmm. scoop in. Um, I have, uh, I'm in recovered anorexic. And oh. body dysphoria is a huge thing oh with anorexia. Yeah. And I, too, used to use cooking as a way to care for my family, but it was also a way for me to eat without eating. Right. You know, and it was yeah. a huge part of my travel and my journey through the anorexia and through healing from it. And now, as you can see, it's become this very healing and wonderful thing. Food as medicine and, and food as love. And, you know, it was so interesting. It's so interesting how food can be interwoven in our That's lives, amazing. isn't it? Yeah, but I love the way you say food is love. It really is love. Yes. You know? I mean, like all my life, I've always thought about the people I'm cooking for. And, you know, it didn't start off that way. I mean, mm -hmm. I was like, when I first started cooking for my wife, I just would always throw three jalapenos into everything. <laughs> and because we were in courtship, she was like eating it. And right. after and going, a year of it, she said, can, I, can we please have something that doesn't have jalapenos? Right. And I realized, I'm cooking for her, of course. So yes. I just eat jalapenos on the side now. I don't, yeah. to, I don't have to cook them. That's dumb. Right. I want her to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and that's what I love about cooking is that you're able to really channel. Modify it. And, and you can what you want to do, do for what someone. you need for someone and the whole point of the show you know is is to be able to modify so that I can enjoy time with my family and they want to be able to enjoy time with me mm -hmm. and it used to be okay let's go get Mary Beth her stuff and then let's go to this other place because they can't give her anything there or I don't know what to cook for you or whatever and so the whole point of the show is bringing making food fun for everyone bringing everyone back to the table and modifying it or putting it in a, like making a food that might say my mother but she loves chocolate chip cookies so I just made her some chocolate chip cookies in Kansas City 
that I can have too. And we enjoy chocolate chip cookies together. Yeah. And it was, it's like one of those, like, okay, I'm making this for my mom and I'm making it for me too. And we get to share this experience together and we're being ourselves and I'm the allergic one and she's the non-allergic one and we're still enjoying our time together. You and don't enjoying know that you're, together. you're not missing anything, but you're together. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, cooking is, is about eating together. Yes. Yeah. And being yourself. Yes. yes. And, and showing who you are when, if you're the cook, Showing who you are through your food. Oh, good point. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I feel like, yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. So right. this um, you would do another five times. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing we have to do is uh, throw it in the oven, and then we'll be doing the garnish, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's get to those steps. So okay. how long, uh, what temperature? do we? 350. Okay. For 35 minutes. 35 minutes. All right. We want to roast the pumpkin, and we want to, uh, the outside rounds, and they and the filling needs to set up inside. Okay. And this, do different squashes take different times? Yes, they do. And so here's the thing that you can do if you want to um, make sure that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, hedge your bat a little bit, is you can put the rounds in first, mm -hmm. let them roast for a while. A little while. And then know that it's going to take 30 minutes for the, the filling, filling to set up. Okay. Right. Okay. So I had the 35 minutes of, you know, with the acorn squash, it worked that way. Yes. But the other squashes, I don't know. You know. Okay. I've made it with Hubbard squash before. I've also made it with the pumpkins, like yeah. I said, for jack-o'-lanterns. Um, the pumpkins are take a little bit longer. Okay. And so do the Hubbards. They're, they're, the Hubbards are Probably because really they're bigger, right? Yeah. And, yeah. They're, and they're strong. They're, they're stronger, they're yeah. They're denser meat. I was going to say, if it... <laughs> Based it on how you cut through the squash. If you can easily cut through the squash, likely it's going to cook a little le in a little less time. Yeah. Um, and if it's hard, like butternut squash takes an hour. You know, right. it's it takes a long time. So the harder the squash, the longer it is to cook. That's my theory, but I think it's true. I so. think I'm, we should stick by it. If not, if that doesn't make sense, we're going to make it so make yeah. it true. Yeah, you heard it here first. So we already toasted these right these are the seeds from the squash that we're using today we're doing acorns these are acorn squash seeds but again we could do pumpkin right yeah and um i'm sorry i'm just gonna eat one you go for it you want to try one? well i'm in my teeth while we talk yep mm. mm -hmm. those but they're are nice and moist yeah mm -hmm. and they no have sweet. the um the little tiny toasty flavor mm -hmm. toasty flavor toasty flavor mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna use that again okay so now we're gonna do the bread crumbs right so you get a really hot skillet keep it dry to start with okay uh, and then we're going to put in the fabulous, well-made breadcrumbs. Bread crumbs. Not the junky from the store breadcrumbs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> these are Mary Beth's breadcrumbs. Right. And what we're doing is we're toasting these two. What we want is just a little something to crunch on top. Okay. The texture. Look at you and your fancy technique. All right. How about that? Uh -huh. So the hotter the skillet, the faster this goes, or the more uh, action you have to give it. Right. And stay on top of it. Yeah. Um, and then just a little bit of something, something, right? This is just for the mm -hmm. garnish. So a little bit of salt just to... Some of that pink Himalayan salt again. Pick it a little bit that way. Um, and then to stay in the theme, a little bit of the cinnamon. Mm. And a little bit of the chipotle. Again, just to ignite, not the flavor. We're not making something Mexican. And you can right. if you want, but we're going to stay with the traditional flavors. So now we're not Smell going... Smell that when it starts to toast off. We're just going... Right. Right. <laughs> Maybe a little <laughs> the sparkler that, that comes in the bottom of the box. That smells so good. Oh right. my gosh. All right, so we want to toast that. Okay. And then um, before we put in the seeds, because they're going to still have some moisture in them, yes. what we want to do is we want these guys to soak up a little bit of that olive oil and gotcha. still be crunchy, right? We're going to make something crunchy here. Okay. That's what this is all about. Um, and this is gluten free bread, you guys. This is gluten free, corn free, soy free. All of the freeze that I need to have bread that tastes really, really good. And uh, we have, again, we've used the food processor to process them into breadcrumbs that are, you know, I mean, look at this. There's there's this big of a breadcrumb and then there's like teeny tiny pieces. Yeah, we're, know, like, making, so. we're like making micro croutons. Yeah, <laughs> micro croutons. That's a good name for those because they are garnish, you know. Right. Yeah, you don't want soupy flour goop on top of your Ew. beautiful, top right? of your beautiful squash. Ew! That's a, I can't even think what soupy flour goop looks like. Eh, uh, like gray, <laughs> awful. Okay, I'll stop this right There you go. Okay, so and then we have some of our same olive oil that we had left over with the sherry and the um the sherry garlic. vinegar and the garlic. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. You don't need a lot in that. Right? So you're dropping it in. Do not pour this in right. because otherwise you'll have soupy bread and you know all of it. Just dropping, dropping. Right. You don't need a lot. What well, we're just we're trying to give it a little bit of 
crispiness and, mm -hmm. and a little bit of the flavor to, of to get in there. Yummy. A little bit of the sharpness of the vinegar. Oh, I smell it and it was so good. Mm -hmm. Sharp. That's a good way to describe vinegar. Oh. It's very, I always say it's tart, but it's not really tart. It's sharp. Right. And then seeds. Seeds that are already toasted. Right. And I put them back in. Right. And then they get a little bit more toasty. Right. And they toasty all get toasted seeds. together. Yes. Right. And then with the toasting, you want something that's a little bit past the golden brown. Okay. It's going to be, you know, you already saw the colors that were coming out of the, right. of the pumpkins. Of right. The, the pies, sorry. Um, so this, we want something that's going to contrast with that a little bit, and that's where you get those little nice little toasties. Awesome. Okay, so, and that's all that we put in there, correct? That's all we put in. Okay, so we're going to be toasting this for a little bit longer until mm -hmm. it turns just past golden brown, correct? Correct. Okay, and then we get to do the garnishing and the eating. I'm so excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm hungry as what I am. I'm so hungry too. It smells <laughs> so good. Okay, you guys, we're going to go do the taste test now. Okay, you guys, it's time for my favorite part, the yeah. taste test. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. You ready? Yep. Let's do it. Dig in. Right. Okay. You have to eat it like a pie, folks. Try it. And just get a whole big old yummy yum. Oh, good gracious. You guys, this is ridiculous. There's so many flavors in here. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's sweet. It's savory. It's crunchy. It's soft. It's so good. And it's weird. People have never had it before. Right. <laughs> and and like, it's, it's so cool. It's like, this is something that I would make at Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And like, or, or for like, I don't know, 4th of July with whatever squash is available, you know? Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. it'd be so good. Oh my gosh, you guys. This is so good. You can make it with pumpkins in Halloween. You can call them jack-o'-lantern pies. Back You're, to their source. Yes. So smart. Oh my gosh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> okay, so um, your book, again, mm -hmm. tell me the title. Getting back to me. Getting back to me. From girl to boy to woman in just 50 years. In just 50 years. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> By Scotty Jeanette Madden. Please, you guys, it's on it's on uh it's on digital. There's yes. digital copy, yep. there's hard copy. Get yourself a copy there's and read audiobooks. it. There, oh, there's audiobooks yeah. too. Great. Get yourself a copy and read it because it really is such it's such a it's such a story and it's a true story and it delves into the life of you know what I'm I've always wondered like what are you guys going through what does that feel like because it's such a traumatic thing to be on one side of it and then it's so liberating to be on the other side oh mm -hmm. and it's and I wanted it's like how does that feel you know and I'm so glad you wrote this book I'm oh. so glad mm -hmm. okay so and how it's do a love story it is a love story it's yes. a beautiful love story <laughs> um so how do we get a hold of you or how can we reach out how can we see what you're doing what you're up to you can always keep track of marcy and me on zuzubean.com okay zuzubean.com and we'll yep. we'll put that at the bottom That's yes right. and that on our website we always post where we're going to be speaking next okay um where uh what is coming up marcy's mm -hmm. just finished the, the draft of her book ah so we're so, in editing stages on that. So everybody yeah. always wants to know what, what was Marcy thinking going through all this too. So this yeah. is Marcy's side. Oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, you're going to be coming out with a recipe book at some point, right? That's right. I, I'm, I've started a recipe book already. I've got about 75, 80 recipes right that's now. That's a lot of recipes. <laughs> well, it's weird because uh, I, I never thought I was inventing recipes, but mm -hmm. that's what I was doing. Yeah. And boy, if they're if they're all like this, then this is I'm buying that recipe <laughs> book. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Okay, you guys. Well, thank you so much, Scotty, for coming today. And thank you, um, yeah, it's ah, I love it. All right, you guys. This is Mary Beth Eversol, the allergy actress, with special guest Scotty Jeanette Madden. Sign off for now. Bye bye.